No one knew what I had done. It was a complete secret. I didn't feel like I had any other option. I needed to survive. I tried to erase it completely from my mind, but I couldn't. I grew up in the rough side of town in South Auckland. I couldn't keep a job because I kept having breakdowns about my parents' death. I didn't have any income for six weeks. That's when I came across a newspaper ad for prostitution that said mums and students do it. I was actually a virgin at the time. I thought it was just sex. I didn't even know what sex was. Prostitution in New Zealand is advertised as glamorous and a way to find financial freedom. It's considered a normal job. I remember going in with a fake name. They put me in this main room where the men would come in and look at me. It's like being at the supermarket, but you're the meat. The first time I got bought by somebody, I felt completely numb. Even after the first day, I couldn't handle it. I didn't know how to. I would call my manager and would tell her I was sick, yet she would always end up convincing me to come in. Many of the men were high or drunk, making them violent and unpredictable. Men would often demand power and control in a session, doing perverted things to me. During a session, you're putting your life in the hands of a complete stranger. The other girls would often talk about how not to get murdered. You can be a walking corpse, it doesn't matter. Somebody will buy you. I felt completely dead inside. I struggled with disassociation. I felt like I was floating outside of my body, like I wasn't connected to anything that was actually happening. When I was at the brothel, I tried to convince myself I was anywhere else but there. I couldn't do it sober anymore. One day I had this vision of me dead from a drug addiction somewhere in the South Island. And I knew if I stayed I wouldn't make it. It almost feels impossible to get out once you're in. I tried to study again, which was something that got me out. I was able to live off the student allowance. I ended up not being able to study. I couldn't eat. I couldn't think. I couldn't do any basic functions properly. I felt like I was out of control in every area. I'd go to sleep and then try and restart again the next day. The doctor diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder, but the therapist explained it was a complex PTSD. He ended up attempting suicide three times. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I had this big question. Was prostitution rape? So I bought a book about rape trauma. I had all the symptoms of rape and all the consequences of rape. A condom doesn't protect a woman from the emotional trauma caused during a session. From the man's perspective, it's just seen as normal as getting a cup of coffee. You go to the bathroom, you know, get your sex, it's seen as the same thing. No woman can come out of this industry unchanged. It's not safe, and it will never be safe. It feels like people in general put the blame on the woman by saying it's her choice. No little girl grows up wanting to be a prostitute. It's not her choice, but it's life circumstances that have pushed her into prostitution out of desperation.
When trying to explain it to other people, it felt like there was no empathy. It was re-traumatizing. It's a bit shameful to say, but I was murderously angry at men. I really hated them. I was an atheist at the time, but slowly God worked on me. I found healing and forgiveness that I didn't think was possible. It's a miracle in itself that I've been able to forgive the men who hurt me. How I saw my life completely transformed. All the disgusting things that happened to me made me feel less than human. I was desperate to be free from all the pain. When I had nothing left inside, I found power in crying out to God for help. Feelings I had been stuffing down for years finally came out. I finally saw myself with worth and value. There was freedom in his name. Prostitution didn't define who I was anymore. I was free.